Hi, it's your Sewing Sherpa Shauna here, and I'm going to take you through the process of sewing the Carolyn Pajama, um, Closet Core Carolyn Pajama Pattern Pants, or shorts. We're gonna do the shorts. So, I mean, how hard could it be? It's a uh, 4.10, I'm gonna get these done by five o'clock, you'll see. Uh, we've got three pages, one, two, three, 3.5, we can do this, 3.5. So, instructions, please note all references to left or right pattern pieces refer to how it's worn on the body. So if they say right side, they mean right, my right, not your right. All right, pants and shorts, pockets, I'll use right sides together, align the angled edges of the pockets and front leg, pin and sew at five eight. So here's the pocket pattern and here is the front shorts. And I have these cut and notched. I've double checked all my notches are there, so in case they refer to the notches. Oh, you know what? There's a little spot here. They only half printed. I know that they're gonna have me clip to that. So I'm going to grab a pencil. And remember how we marked this? I put a pin through the circle. I open this up to the wrong side of my fabric. And then I'm gonna put a little spot there and a little spot there. We'll see what they have us do. All right, so that's our little do not forget that spot. Now, in the instructions right here, it shows that on the pocket edge, they have you interface that. So they have you interface. I think that's a really kind of a finicky place to interface. And the reason they're having you interface that is that this is on a complete bias. This is on a complete bias. So sometimes when you sew that, it's gonna stretch. And also when you put your hand in and out of that pocket, it could stretch. Instead of doing interfacing, I'm gonna put this, it's like a really fine horse hair tape. You could put a little strip of fabric in there. There's a lot of things you can put in there that will keep that from stretching. But this would go on the 5 8 inch seam line. So I'm gonna put that in there um, as I sew it, okay? So I'm gonna cut myself off a chunk of that. Now, so it says right sides together. And since I don't have a, well, now I have a right side on this because I put that spot on there. So I've got this right sides together, and I'm gonna flip this over and put this right sides together. So I should have a right front and a left front now, and I'm going to pin it. Not that I'm a huge fan of pinning, but one or two couldn't hurt. They put an illustration of a pin. And where am I going to put that um, tape? I'm gonna be putting it right along the stitch line as I sew. And it doesn't matter if I do it on this side or the other side, I mean, it's good to be consistent, but that should keep this from stretching out over time. Let's go over to the sewing machine. Power is on. And I'm lining up with five eighths. My tape is at five eighths. Normal stitch length, normal tension. Yes, I'm gonna back tack, it's a seam. And this is already stretching a little bit. It's kind of funny because um, those ends weren't lined up. There we go, five eighths. Stepped on me wrong. All right, that one's ready. And this one's ready. You ever get one of those songs stuck in your head and you're like singing it all freaking day? Just one phrase over and over. See ya, rainbow. Stop. songs all right let's go back and see what they want us to do next okay so then it says pin and sew five eighths press seam allowances towards pocket under stitch allowance and grade seam so seam press seam allowance towards pocket so this 
right here, I can see is a crotch, right? That's a crotch curve. I can see the crotch curve. I see the crotch curve. So that makes this my pocket. This is the pant front. This is my pocket. Seam allowances towards the pocket. So everything's towards the pocket. I, right here, it's a single layer. And then it tells me to press it back. And I'm going to encourage you to press that back. But because I have linen, sometimes with linen, you can kind of finger press that and get rid of the, and just handle that. So this is understitch. Now for tricks for understitching, go to page 12. And I love that they have like these little glossaries in here. Page 12 does not have understitching. Anyways, I'll show you how to understitch. They have a really good um, <laughs> reference for understitching. All right, so understitching is just holding all the seam allowances and the fabric to one side and I don't want this all to the pocket I mean to the outside I don't want to see that stitching on the top I want to see it inside the pocket kind of hidden inside the pocket so I'm going to sew really close to the edge of this seam with all my seam allowances towards the pocket I did not back tack I mean the reason I didn't back tack is because this is not a structural seam this is like you know it's gonna get crossed later. It's not a structural seam, so I'm not super worried about back tacking. If I do back tack, it's not that big of a deal. But if I don't need to, why would I do it? Right. The other end. There we go. And understitched. What do we want to do? Press pocket down to the wrong side of the pant leg along the slanted seam. What? Press the pocket down to the wrong side of the pant leg. Pocket, pant leg, along the slanted seam. Oh, along the slanted seam. Sometimes these sentences just do not make sense unless you like act it out. All right, so I've done that. All right, uh, press pocket in half at notches, ensuring top and bottom po pocket aligned to the side seams. So I'm gonna press it in half at the notches. So here's a notch here and a notch here. And there's a notch here and a notch here. Notches help you line things up. That's helping me line it up there. This is helping me line it up here. All three of these notches are stacked down here. All right, is that really all you want me to do? Okay. I can do that. I'm gonna do that same thing to this one. So the wrong sides together, folding it in half, folding it to the notches, pinning it. There's two notches, three notch stack over here. All right, pressed. Gotta love linen. Um, Sew the bottom pocket seam and serge to finish or use a French seam. Then baste the top and side of pocket to front leg, repeat for the other leg. All right, so I'm gonna bring these over to the sewing machine with the instructions. I'm gonna do a French seam because most of you don't have sergers. But honestly, serging across the bottom would be just fine. So remember with French seams, we do it wrong sides together, which is already wrong sides together. We go one pass at three eighths. All right, and then I'm gonna trim it down to an eighth. Get rid of all of that. So I've got this one here. Again, I got that bottom pocket. Flipping it out. Might need to poke that corner out a little bit. It's being reticent. Reticent. And I'm gonna sew my quarter inch seam. Pressing it first. I'm pressing it first. There.
Okay, flipping it back out to where it was. A nice finished pocket bottom. This actually double sewn, so it's quite strong. All right, so now they're telling me that I need to baste top and side of pocket to front leg. So I see right here that it's basted along this side and along the top, along the top and along this side. I don't know why they have different colors. I think that's a problem. Oh, oh, they're showing this one on the inside, this one on the outside. I don't know. But I'm gonna do that. What is basting? Basting is a long stitch. Why am I basting? Because this is a temporary hold, or it's not temporary, it's always gonna be in there, but it's not like a permanent seam or anything. It's not like it needs to do anything besides just hold these layers together to make it so um, easy to sew later. So when I baste, I don't really need to back tack. You're welcome to back tack, but you know, if you can cut that step, why not? So my notches are lining up here. I've chosen to not put a pin in because um, such a short seam and my notches are lining up nicely. Basted. And, and I know this is hard to see, but I am everything's to the inside of my fabric. There's one little spot here that kind of shows you that, that that's the wrong side of my fabric and that's the wrong side, but I'm keeping track of this. I'm definitely got my pocket on the inside because I don't want that pocket flapping around to the world. It's got to be inside the pant, not on the outside of the pant. That'd be really funny if you had your pocket on the outside of your pant. Although, a smart designer, you know what? Put that pocket on the outside and say you meant to do it. <laughs> do whatever you want. All right. Done. And let's see, they're the same color. Um... Faux fly, all views, place front leg pieces right sides together, aligning the fly extension and the crotch seam. This is a very small crotch seam. This is a fly extension. If you've never done it before, you just gotta trust me on this. This happy little smile here is our fly extension and crotch seam. So I'm putting them right sides together. And then it says, um, Starting from the top center front notch, baste a straight seam with the longest stitch possible to the circle marking. You can draw a line with a rule if it helps you sew straight. At the circle, switch to a medium stitch and continue sewing. Back stitch a few stitches to the circle and then continue along the crotch seam to the end. Okay, so what they want me to do is they want me to sew from this center front notch here down to the circle, which should be a straight line. And this is going to get opened up later. That's why they're saying baste it with the longest stitch because you will be unpicking it. They're like, dun, 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 you will unpick this at some point. And then I'm gonna stitch switch to a regular stitch, back tack and sew to the end. So they're saying if you can draw a line to help guide you. So I like to find guides on my sewing machine. Right now, I have like this little drill hole right here and fortunately, oh, it's got a screw stuck into it. Anyways, it doesn't matter, bag ones. Um, the edge of this fabric actually lines up with that. So I'm gonna use that for mine. Now, I don't need to back tack, but I find that when um, I'm doing these long basting stitches, um, sometimes they open up and then it kind of spoils my fun later. So I'm just gonna do one quick back tack up there. And now I'm watching the edge of my fabric out here and the edge of this cut. I am not looking at the needle. I cannot sew straight if I'm looking at the needle. I can only sew straight if I'm looking out here. I'm gonna keep that lined up, keep that lined up, lined up. It's so easy when you don't look at the needle. Now I'm getting close to the circle, I can look at the circle as my goal. I get to the circle, turn it to a normal stitch length, 2.5, couple stitches forward and back. I do need a back tack there. And now all of a sudden I'm on a curve. It's like womp, 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 fast curve. So get ready to spin it. You're gonna follow your 5 8 inch line to the end and back tack. Anyways, I'm not loving that curve. That curve is not cute. That curve does not happen on me. You might have to do this curve a few times. In fact, I'm gonna start from the bottom where I'm not, okay, so I like the curve to here. And now I'm gonna follow my 5 8 inch line up to that. There we go. I like that one better. So I'm gonna to need to unpick this one inch right here, which is not hard to do. I just put up a video today on how to unpick. My favorite way um, 
my tailoring way. Ugh, this seam ripper is not sharp. Okay, that is, for all intents and purposes, out. Just that one inch that I didn't like. All right, what's next? Um, to the end, okay. Snip front uh, from just below the fly extension to the circle, being careful not to cut into your stitch line. All right, so that circle right there, I'm going to snip, snip to it without going through it. All right, that's always nerve wracking, cutting into your fabric, you know? It's like, ugh, did it. Trim the crotch seam to three eighths and finish with a serge or a zigzag stitch. So they want me to trim this down and finish with a serge or a zigzag stitch. So I have my serger set up. Why would I trim to three eighths if I'm using a serger? I wouldn't, I would let the serger trim it. All right, I don't think this instruction is actually the best instruction, but we'll see when I get done. So I have got a spot on my serger and following and trimming and sewing. is done. Uh, if you're doing a zigzag, you would have trimmed up to there and then did a zigzag stitch. Or actually, you could do a zigzag stitch and then trim up to the zigzag. Finish raw edges of fly extension with a serged or zigzag stitch or by enclosing with bias tape. So let's go back to the serger. <laughs> I'm going to trim off this edge and then when I get to this corner here, if you have a serger, I'm going to, my needles are going to get right to the end, right to the end, and then I'm going to lift my presser foot, or pull these, release a little bit of tension so I can pull a little thread out, and I'm going to pull my fabric out a little bit, Ooh, turn this corner, and so along this edge. Now this is tricky because like, if I keep going, my knife's gonna cut right into my fabric. That's messed up. So I'm gonna exit. I don't really understand that, but. Or you could buy a spined it. Press fly extension and crotch seam to the right leg. To the right leg, so right as I'm wearing it. So this is my right leg. Everything's gonna get pressed to the right. Okay, it's pressed to the right. Flip pants over and from the right side, so two rows of top stitching a quarter inch apart just inside the perimeter of the fly extension. You may top stitch a curved or 90 degree fly front depending on your preference. And then we're gonna sew a bar tack. So I can see through the fabric and I can um, follow that uh, if, if I want to. If you can't see through your fabric, you may be able to feel that you may need to draw a line on your fabric for you to follow because they just kind of left you hanging. They're like, go for it, just sew out there in the middle. So uh, I'm going to sew with a normal stitch, although it might be fun to have a little bit longer. And I'm, I can see through my fabric, so I'm just gonna use the edge of my foot as a guide. Now here's where I'm gonna decide, do I want it curved or angled? And I'm gonna go for curved. I'm just gonna see you right when I'm curved. There, and back tack. Now I have this curved situation. I need to do a second row. And the second row, this is all uh, faux, like faux, 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 like not for reals. Like this is not actually doing anything. It is not holding any fly in place whatsoever using the edge of my foot against my previous um, seam as my guide. And I have two parallel rows with a little bit of a curve. Okay, fine. Sew a bar tack along the bottom of the top stitching to secure. So this part, a bar tack right here. Now, this is a faux fly, which is actually never gonna get used. The bar tack, again, is going to be superficial. It's not actually going to do the purpose of a bar tack, but I'm gonna take you over to the other sewing machine and I'm gonna show you how to do a bar tack 
because for some of you, you're like, bar what? So let's go bar tacking it. Set my sewing machine to a zigzag stitch. I'm going to make it a very short length, maybe not 0.5, but somewhere close to there, a very short length. And then I'm gonna have a somewhat medium width. So for something like this, you might want to like, you know, play around with it and see, because this is going to be, um, what do you call it, decorative. So you might want to decorate a little bit, but basically I've just got my all-purpose foot on. I'm in a zigzag stitch and they want me to do a bar tack right along the bottom of the fly like you would see on a pair of jeans. So here we go. Uh, it's a little bit over further than I want, so I'm going to scoot it. Let's try this. I feel like it's even wider than I want. So I'm going to take that width in just a little bit. So this should do it. All right. Usually you don't back tack on a bar tack, but because I got a little bit too far, I'm going to do it. And oh, I can't step on this. <laughs> All right. So this is, if you can see it real close here, this is just a teeny tiny zigzag bar tack. That's a bar tack. See how easy that is? A bar tack. It's just a zigzag stitch that reinforces. All right, let me go sewing machine. Now what does it want me to do next? What craziness has this thing dreamed up? Swip the page. Sewing the side seams and inseams. Right sides together align the back legs along the center back crotch seam matching notches. Sew at 5 8 Finish the seam and press towards the right pant leg. Shorts. One, two, three, four. And I want you guys to know the air conditioner's off, the heater's off, the music's off. I'm doing it for you. I'm taking one for the team. All right. Back crotch seam right here, five eighths of an inch. So we're going to go back over here. I'm going to pin this because pinning is good when you're learning how to sew. Five eighths of an inch, normal stitch length. That's a little bit long. All right, so sometimes when you get on this kind of curve here, they say it's a good idea to straighten this curve out because it kind of stretches it a little. And the reason why I agree with it on, on a lot of levels is the fact that on a back crotch seam, think about it like you're when you stand and sit down, you're stretching that seam a lot. So if you're already kind of building in the stretch, it, it will keep it from, make it a little bit less likely to pop. I don't do that with all curves, um, but for that crotch seam, it's important. And we're going to overlock this. To the right if I'm wearing it, not to the right if I'm looking at it. Which I get right and left mixed up, trust me. I get right and left mixed up all the time. I'm like, if I tell you to go right, you need to go left, so I'm that bad. But, so I'm gonna put this on me and be like, okay, this is my right leg, so I'm going to want that seam allowance to the right. And then that way I don't have to wonder. All right, so I'm pressing it to the right. Ooh, gotta love linen. And what's the next thing? Right sides together align the front and back legs of the inseam matching the crotch seam, knee notches, and hems for the pant. Match notches with ease, blah, blah, blah. Pin and sew. Finish the seam and press to the... Press to the back. Oh, to the back. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I've got right sides together. They want me to sew this cute little inseam here. And um, I need to remember to, if this is tipped to the right leg, this one also needs to be tipped to the right leg because you don't want the, you know, one going one way and one going the other. It will fit funny, it will feel funny. And that whole inseam is like that long because these are short shorts. Uh, but I do want that seam to line up at the crotch. And it's one of those where I'm gonna be particular about it. So I'm putting a pin in because it looks like one of these legs is a little bit like, like it's cut a little bit longer or stretched a little bit longer or something. It's not lining up perfectly. And I'll trim that up later, but I want my inseam, my center seam to be lined up. 
All right, got to that seam, pull the pin, pull this back up and notch it, going off the end. And, oh, it wasn't perfect. Look, it's off by an eighth. Ugh. Oh, well, just don't look at the crotch. <laughs> We're almost there. Serger is the fastest way, I'm telling you. All right, pin the front to back, pressing seams to the back. So there's my back, I've just pressed it to the back, all right. Attaching the waistband, all views. This pattern calls for 1.5 inch elastic. Oh, they want us to sew the side seams too. I'm like, how are you supposed to attach the waistband without doing the side seam? So we, okay, so magically, five minutes later, this is fixed. So I actually, the right side and the left side, when I sewed them, I, I flipped some things backwards and whatever, and I ended up without this sticking out to the side. If you see that happening, I apologize, um, but it's fixed now. So now I can do my side seams. I need that all the way up there in order to do my side seams. Five-eighths of an inch. Notches and bottoms and everything lined up. side seam so I'm, I'm I'm showing you some sneak peeks into speed sewing like things you can do that sometimes save time and sometimes get you messed up like all the fiddling around taking things out and shaking it out and looking at it and walking around with it or whatever just sit at your machine move from one seam to the next you're good so now I'm gonna actually leave those together because it'll help me with my surging. I'm gonna surge those outside seams. There's one bad thing about a serger, it's a one-way street when you're cutting the seam allowance off, right? It's like you can't add that seam allowance back. It's gone, it's been cut. I mean, there's always ways you can save things. Gussets, go days, trims, perseverance, recutting, resewing. <laughs> All right, outside seams are done, and we're gonna go over the table and work on the waistband. Page 25, the top right side, attaching the waistband. This pattern calls for 1.5 inch elastic. You can cut it narrower, but then you have to fix your waistband. So I can find my 1.5 inch elastic, so I, I found my half inch elastic, <laughs> and I zigzagged three rows of it together. I mean, it's gonna work and everything, but um, I certainly wouldn't use this for sportswear, but that's what that's, that's what's going on there. Um, right sides, okay. Right sides together, sew the short sides of the waistband pieces at 5 eighths of an inch, press seams open. So here is waistband, there's two of these, and that means that the front and the back waist measure exactly the same, theoretically. That's not what it looks like to me. The back is much bigger than the front. Ah, well, hopefully they accommodated for that somewhere. I mean, seriously, this front waistband, front waist is a full inch and a quarter smaller than the back waist, so either they're not, oh, they're gonna have a seam at the center front and center back instead of side seam, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Clever. Okay, so we're gonna sew the short ends, right sides together, and press the seams open. Now, here's one thing. Some of you have requested that we do um, drawstring for at least half of the waistband, so, I'm going to sew at 5 eighths of an inch here on one side, right sides together. And now that I know that, um, oh, look at that, they're staggered by a quarter. It'll still work, but that was sloppy. 
All right, now that we know that this is gonna be center back and then this next one is gonna be center front, I am going to, if I'm going to do a drawstring, I am going to sew, okay, so I'm gonna fold this in half, there's the halfway notch, and then I'm gonna fold this in half again, and I'm going to create a little opening for my drawstring to go through, so here's how I'm gonna do it. It doesn't need to be very big, it just needs to be as big as whatever ribbon you're using or tape or whatever. So I'm gonna sew 5 eighths of an inch here. Then when I get to this pin, I'm gonna back tack, lift the needle out, lift the presser foot, slide up to the next pin, put my presser foot down, my needle in, a couple of stitches forward, a couple back. So the end a couple back. Now, what did we just do? On this seam, here, which now has become the front seam because I've done this, I have created a little opening for the drawstring to go through. Isn't that adorable? But the thing is, is I've also now created an outside. So if your drawstring is gonna to go to the outside, then this part right here needs to be on the outside and center front, and you're gonna to need to remember to do that. So that's your workaround for the drawstring. Stay stitch the top edge of the waistband at a half an inch, press the waistband in half, wrong sides together, and press seam allowances in along the stay stitch line. So the unpressed edge of the waistband to the pants. So I definitely need to do the stay stitch and ironing at this point. I'm not a huge fan of that, but we're gonna do that. So if I, I have to look ahead because it's the unpressed, okay, so the unpressed edge of the waistband to the pants matching notches. So the side that has my little opening for the drawstring is not the side that's gonna be pressed. That's gonna be sewn to the pant. I do want that on the outside because we're sewing it right sides together. So that's gonna be the outside. So this is the side I'm gonna be pressing. So I'm gonna sew my half inch guide, stay stitch guide around that edge. And I'm gonna use a little bit of a longer stitch for my stay stitch just to save a few. This is not one of those stitches that is going to um, be structural. In theory, it's going to help me um, uh, well, it's going to help me with it's my press guide. I really don't actually need it. It's not we're sewing on the uh, straight grain of the fabric. This is not going to stretch like the bias. You know what I mean? We did our stay stitcher on the collar edge because it was on a bias. This is actually a press guide. So if you're good at pressing half inch, I don't know why you do Pressing it to the wrong side along my stay stitch line. So our seam allowances are half of an inch, but they're having us do this at, I mean, or five eighths of an inch, but they're having us do this at a half an inch because they're gonna want this to kind of cover up the seam we're gonna sew. So it needs to be like an eighth of an inch longer to cover it. Because I think we're gonna be stitching in the ditch or something. Stitching in the ditch which isn't outside, it's in our um, seam. All right, I've gone around, I've pressed it, mas o menos. And now I'm gonna sew this to the waistband, matching notches. So right sides together, this with the little cute opening is gonna be my center front. I'm gonna handle that first so I don't forget. And I'm turning this waistband so that I can access the right side of it. So the right side of my shorts is on the inside. How do I know that? Because all these seams are out here, right? All these seams are on the outside, so that's the wrong side. This is the right side. Just gonna line the center back up with that center back notch. Now, I didn't actually press my seam allowances. Remember it said to the right side. So I better double check that that is still going to the right side, and it is, okay. And then the rest of this is just matching up your notches and stuff. You don't have to worry about lining up a side seam. Well, 
I don't see any notches along the top edge, so. I'm just gonna do this, to shake it out. Take it over the iron. I have a few pressing things here. It's like, press this in half. I'm like, I'll press it when I'm done. And unfortunately, I'm not seeing any notches on here, so I don't know what that's about. But I'm gonna sew this at 5 eighths of an inch. It doesn't really matter where I start on the waistband. I do want to make sure that these seams line up because it'll be ugly if they don't line up, right? Going at 5 eighths. Everything's laying flat. This is annoying me. seems to line up flat. Hopefully that's also going the correct direction. Yeah, okay. So far so good. Huh. Side seams. Side seams should always go to the front. And this one here, I actually accidentally, oh, because of the pocket. Hmm. Because of the pocket, you're gonna want it to go to the back. Yeah, so that actually worked out. So on this side, I'm gonna definitely hold that to the back, that side seam to the back. But it typically, you go to the front. And of course, this is the second time in this pattern where it's like, nope, the back. <laughs> I wondered why I sewed this so fast. It's because I'm in a long stitch. I just basted that whole fucking thing. Pardon my French. Okay, so I'm switching down to a normal um, stitch length and I'm gonna hit that one again. I'm not even gonna worry about taking out the basting stitch. I'm just gonna quickly buzz through because this is a structural seam and I do not want to, uh, I don't want this one to pop. I don't want my waistband to come off. So I'm gonna buzz around it again. Finishing. Press waistband up, press waistband up, and pin into place from the right side of the pants, ensuring the pressed and stay stitch seam allowance is laying flat against the wrong side of the waistband seam. So basically they want me to press my seam allowances up into the waistband, and then I'm gonna wrap this waistband around to the back, pinning it into place from the front side because I'm going to be stitching in the ditch on the front side front side, and, and hopefully catching that on the back side. So this is again one of those other places where I'm like, yeah, I'm probably going to press that because trying to handle like the seam allowances while I'm sewing blind is a recipe for torture. And sewing is fun, right? Sewing's fun. That edge. Um, stretched out a little bit. Sewing is fun. So all my seam allowances, you can kind of see through this fabric, which is a little disconcerting, but <laughs> it's pajamas. Watson doesn't care. Um, I'm pushing all my seam allowances up into the waistband. All of them. They're telling me I can grade these if I want to, trim them or grade them or whatever. I'm going to ignore them. That's my second favorite thing to do with seams. There. See, and that's why I feel like folding this in half and pressing it in half before I did this would have been a waste of time because when I did this, I would have pressed back out that fold. You know what I mean? Like, ah, that's a real stitch. And if I pull on it to pop it, it's gonna kill it. So now I'm going to fold this in half over this waistband and pin it into place. Yeah. So when I pin this, I'm actually gonna want to be able to feel a little bit of that back seam allowance below this stitch line because I don't want to accidentally not sew through that waistband because I'm gonna be doing all my sewing from this front side. So I'm folding it 
over that back seam, but pinning it on the front side. And if you'll notice, I'm doing this in quarters at first. I'm doing my two side seams, my center front and my center back, because uh, that these are important areas to line up. If you just start at one point, oops, wrong side, and um, start moving along, you're, it's gonna grow, it's gonna start twisting and growing on the side that you're pinning it. And so this kind of keeps that from happening. It's like, I am putting my foot down, this is where this is at, and then I can go back in and fill in with pins. So there, I've got that first quarter done. And now I can go in and fill in with pins. I have to tell you, this is annoying me. When I sewed this, this kind of flipped over here, this overlock thing, and I'm trying to not let it annoy me, even though it's annoying me. It's not really that big of a deal, but um, it would be so easy to just pop that and lay it flat, and I put so much effort into this, just like, ugh, but I'm gonna ignore it. But if you feel like you don't wanna ignore it, if you're doing something like that, you can go ahead and make that happen. So this is gonna be one of those places where as a beginner, you're probably gonna to wanna to put in a ton of pins. I am going to put in a ton of pins right along here just to show you how it's done. And then I'm gonna do the rest of the way by feel, hopefully. So I'm gonna flip these back out so that I am working in a tube. So I'm looking inside at the right side of the pant here. And um, I'm going to actually start at the center back. And the reason why I'm gonna start at the center back is it shows that we're leaving an opening um, here. It shows that we're leaving an opening to stick the elastic through. And one of the more discreet places to stick that, op that elastic through would be the center back. But I'm gonna do it just slightly offset of exact center back, maybe just a little bit to the right because center back can get a little bit clumsy. Oh, that's right, I've got to turn on this side. All right, so I'm gonna start about here. I'm a stitch in the ditch. So when I'm sewing this, I'm gonna be using my finger here to feel how much of the waistband is hanging out below this stitch that I'm putting in. So I don't wanna feel more than an eighth of an inch there at any given time. It should just barely be sticking out past that, but I am using my fingernail as my guide. And I don't have long fingernails. You don't have to have long fingernails to, you know, feel this. Um, but if it's too far, then I'll just kind of like pull the top down a little bit or I'll push the bottom up a little bit. I just want a little teeny tiny bit hanging out. And you may have pinned this all into place all the way around, but even if you have, again, this is the way you double check that nothing's kind of slipping from the other side. So if I flip this over, you'll see I'm catching the waistband on this side and I'm stitching in the ditch on the um, outside. So that looks really good. It's a really satisfying feeling when this works. <laughs> uh, there should be some satisfaction. in this. So it's like, what, 10 after? So we've been at this for an hour, but we're also filming. And I also made that mistake. That mistake cost us a minute. So maybe an hour and a half to do these shorts because I still have to put the cuffs on with the piping. But we're gonna do the cuffs on this the same way um, we did the cuffs on the shirt because the way they had you do the cuffs in the pattern, like in the instructions, those were like, that was full on torture. Like, I don't even know. I don't know if I could follow that. i would probably cry. Okay, so we're going through multiple layers now, so it's a little bit harder for me to feel if this is out, but I can feel it. I'm still in the ditch. There's my Q 
cute little opening just ever so slightly off of center front you can make these things match up these things that I don't match up because I'm just I'm in a hurry, I'm lazy, I don't care. It does not mean it's not possible. And I have seen some very, very beginner sewers match things up absolutely beautifully. It is possible. It just takes a little bit of care and a little bit of time. And you'll be so proud of yourself when everything lines up perfectly. I unfortunately started sewing way too young and uh, developed a non-care attitude. So here we go. I'm gonna be leaving enough room for my inch and a half elastic to go through. And this is all sewn down. I'm gonna double check that I didn't miss any pots. Oof, I missed a little spot there. See that underneath that pocket, I didn't feel it. But that's okay. I don't think that's gonna be super detrimental. It's just like a half an inch. But I can go back in there and fix that if I want to. All right, the rest looks good. So now what do they want me to do? Attach your elastic to a safety pin and feed it through the space you left in the waistband. Pull all the way through. Try it on. See how much you like that. So uh, I am going to do that. I'm going to grab a safety pin. And um, I'm also going to talk to you for a minute about the drawstring situation. So if I wanted to do a drawstring... I would have some drawstring sewn up or some ribbon purchased and I would instead of having this go all the way around I would have it go only halfway around and then I would attach the drawstring to the elastic here at the end and I would run the drawstring with the elastic attached to it through the waistband so you'd have you know like half and half um, I did not prepare any drawstring. So anyway, my elastic's coming apart. My, <laughs> my ghetto elastic, so I'm sewing it back together. <laughs> uh, safety pin. I'm gonna replace this entire elastic with good elastic once I have some in my possession. Uh, but I'm gonna show you how to run it through anyway. Safety pin. I'm sure you guys have all done something like this, sending something through your hood. You know, or, oh, God, I'm probably going to unpick that. That's annoying me. That's a great thing about sewing is you can unpick it. So where's my opening? Oh, I left my opening near the side seam. Oh, I thought I was near the center back. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. It's just an opening. It's just an opening to close. So I'm running my elastic through. Oh, and I already know I want this at 29, so I'm just going to literally cut it to 29 right now. And then run it through so I don't have to deal with that um, fitting part, because you don't want to see me fit my shorts. It just, it's not going to be fun. So, my elastic is folding like crazy. Oh, okay, so we get to the seam here, the center back seam, and sometimes, it's, so what you want to do to get your pin to go through is you want to pull the two seams apart so that the safety pin will go through. Thank you, Sia. There's actually a tool that does this really fast. It's called a loop turn, uh, not the loop turner, but a, um, a puller, it's like a long, anyways, I've had mine forever and last time I used it, which was like maybe a couple weeks ago, it's a real handy tool. The plastic just fell apart just disintegrated. So I need to get my hands on another one of those, but it makes this so much faster. I'm all about the tools that make it faster. All right, so I'm at the center front seam again. Uh, pull it apart, get that safety pin to go through the layers. You'll see what I mean when you get there. All right, so now the problem is, is, is we're getting pretty close to the end. And what one of the things that oftentimes happens when we're putting elastic through is um, you'll accidentally pull it all the way through and you'll be like, oh no, man. So I'm gonna pin it 
to the waistband there so I don't accidentally pull it all the way through. All right, here I am coming out the waistband. Just, you can fast forward that, right? That'll be really great to fast forward. So here's in the next challenge. As I was running it through, I have no idea if my safety pin was doing 360s. I have no idea like what's going on in there, if this is all rolled out. So you gotta spend a little bit of time like finessing the elastic is like watching paint dry. This is one of those things where, especially with my elastic, cause it's all like three strips of it sewn together. This could take me literally 10 years to get this all to lay flat. I'm not doing it. I am not doing it. So anyhow, let's pretend like I got that to all lay flat and like even around. The next thing I'm gonna do is take these two ends of elastic And I'm gonna overlap them by about an inch. Oh my gosh, this is a nightmare. I can pull some more out and then like let it go back in, but I'm gonna like overlap them about an inch. And then I'm gonna get under my presser foot and I'm going to sew at a diagonal flip sew across the bottom, pivot, sew to diagonal, flip, sew across the top, and that should be strong enough to hold your elastic together. So you know, I'm not butting the ends and sewing across, I'm actually overlapping them. And then you can let that go in and you go back here and stitch in the ditch and close that up. I am not closing that up because I am not using this elastic, but I just want to show you that. And if you're doing a drawstring, you can run a drawstring right through this opening right here and have it go all the way around and come back out. So that's super easy. You can close everything up in there before you run your drawstring. So we're on to cuffs and then we're done. Sweet. All right, so we did that circle. We did, a, oh, okay. Pin the remainder of the waistband casing place and finish stitching in the ditch close to the waistband. Okay, to prevent your waistband from rolling, sew vertical lines along the back side and front seams as well as extending the top stitching of the faux fly. So they're saying sew that center front seam through the elastic, center back seam through the elastic, and extend your faux fly all the way up. And that will keep the elastic from rolling in your waistband later on but I'm gonna tell you, you want to get all of your elastics, uh, like your elastic like situated before you do that. Um, so that you don't have like more elastic on this side than the left side. Cause once you've sewn it down, it's like, that's how it's gonna end up looking. All right, for extra secure waistband, sew two evenly spaced lines of top stitching all the way around the waistband, which is fine. That's a cute look too. You can totally do that. I'm not doing that with this elastic. Try the pants on to confirm your length and then hem your pants. We're not doing pants, but hemming your pants, um, I don't think that, the pants can also have cuffs, but I'm not sure. We're going over here. Adding leg cuffs for you, B and C. Using, okay, right sides together, match front and back cuffs together along short notch sides. Sew the front and back cuffs together to make a tube. Press the seams open. Using a medium stitch length, stay stitch along the bottom edge of each cuff seam allowance. That will make it easier to press for the next step. Okay. Front cuff, that's back, even though it's, very, it's really hard to see it. But the front cuff is shorter than the back, so these are clearly different lengths, so do not get that confused. So I'm pulling my pins. I'm pulling this off. So now, because I cannot see right and, I can't see right and, I mean, right side and wrong side, I need to open this up and create a right side and a wrong side. And I do this by making sure like those are in opposite directions. And I'm gonna be sewing this to this 
and this to this, and you're like, oh my gosh, but those don't line up because you're gonna sew that, and then you're gonna pull it over and sew that. The front leg's smaller than the back leg. You're just gonna be in control of that. All right, I'm gonna bring this with me. Let's start with the bent edge. to this front to back lining it up bring this around front to back lining it up all right separate these puppies out take them over to the ironing board and they're gonna have us press them open which this this kind of bent seems a little bit of a kicker to press open so I, I like to press one half and then press the other half from the other direction because you don't want to torque the fabric or anything so that one's pressed open on that side Then they're going to have us press that one uh, stay stitch and press the top edge under a half of an inch and uh, that's going to help us and we're going to do that even though I'm not going to follow their instructions for uh, doing the cuff because it still is going to help us so we've got to decide a top edge at this point and I'm gonna stay stitch like they said because I will actually press better with that stay stitch. So longer stitch, doesn't matter. Right side, wrong side, doesn't matter. Pick an edge, they're both symmetrical. Half inch, not five eighths. No back tack is necessary. Ooh, but your seams do need to lay flat. Okay. to the wrong side along that stay stitch line. It's kind of handy having the ironing board right here instead of having to go all the way over into the other room. You know, if you've got your sewing station set up at home and you've got an extra plug, like a perfect place for the ironing board is right behind your sewing machine. So you can literally just turn around while you're sitting down and just sew, um, just, I mean, press as you're sewing. Yeah, you could have like the TV running. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just imagining like being all, anyways, I got a great imagination. <laughs> uh, I'm coming Watson, we're almost done with the shorts. Things take a little bit longer than I imagine they will a lot of times. Okay, pressed under. Now, piping on the legs. Just kind of tack them into place. So I need it on both of them. I need the piping on the right side. But here's what I'm gonna do. Remember at the collar, how we kind of did that 90 degree thing? I'm gonna kind of do a situation like that here with the, at the, uh, at the bottom. So I'm at the inseam, like this little inseam area here, which is the most discreet area. I'm just attaching the um, piping to the leg edge. So I'm not worrying about back tacking it. I'm not worrying about exactly where I'm at on the piping. I'm just kind of, this is basically what I'm doing is I'm pinning the piping to the edge of the leg but I'm pinning it with a basting stitch. 
instead of pins. And you're welcome to um, actually use pins before you do this. All right, we're at the side seams and the side seams are going back at the top, so they may be going back at the bottom. Getting here to this edge, and I'm actually going to want that to go up into. So, is that down? I think so. So, I'm just going to kind of cross them over here at the side seams with this kind of tipping off and this tipping off. So, I'm going to have a little bit of a V situation right at the under, all right, at the under leg. And I think this is going to work. So, what I'm going to do, because I'm not sure this is going to work is um, I'm gonna finish this whole leg before I do the other leg. So I've got that into place. And the next thing I need to do is put my zipper foot on and take this cuff here. It doesn't matter which one at this point. I've got a front leg and a back leg. I've got a front cuff and a back cuff. I need to put these right sides together, so I'm flipping this out, sticking this in the tube, lining up that under leg seam, lining up the out seam, in seam and out seam, not the under leg seam, but anyways, you know what I'm saying. Inseam, out seam lined up. Maybe another pin or two around if you want to. The only reason I'm kind of pinning is making sure that these are the same length. Like one didn't shrink or grow or I didn't cut them differently or what I've got coming. So I'm sticking another pin in. And I'm going to put my zipper foot on that has the opening on the left side so that I can bump this right up against the piping. So if you're putting your um, snap-on foot on, you wanna make sure that you're snapping on the left side of the foot if you're looking at it, right? Is that the left? Yeah, I think it is. I'm so bad with directions. Um, I mean, I'm great with directions, but giving them, not so much. Okay, now I'm gonna pick a spot out here, maybe the side seam to start at. I don't wanna start at the, uh, um, inside leg seam because I'm terrified of it. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right. So I can feel the piping right here and I'm going to bump the edge of um, my zipper foot up against that piping. I got to be in a normal stitch length. This is a real seam. So my right edges are all lined up and my left edge, my the left edge of my foot is bumped up against the piping. just went over that little V at the center of the leg. Ha! And I didn't even notice because I was so preoccupied with everything else. So it wasn't scary after all. All right, so this, this is like, this. the piped part is like staying in place and this top layer is growing. So to preempt this from becoming a problem, I'm stretching it. I'm stretching all the layers and getting them to lay flat. I'm doing a little bit of stretch and sew. I feel like I kind of wandered away from the piping up here somewhere. But let's flip this out and see how bad I did. Um, hey, that looks pretty good. I got that piped. Right, so now all I have to do is flip this up, right? it into place and sew along here well that was pretty easy way easier than whatever that and look what happened under the uh, under here see that's cool 
right? That's what you see like on couch cushions and stuff like that. They kind of overlap. And um, I guess I could have gotten a little bit closer to that piping right there. I can go back in and do that if I want to, but it's under the leg, I don't care. But that's what that's what you're oftentimes gonna see when you like have a piped edge on your cushions or whatever. They just kind of overlap and go into the seam allowance. It's the easiest way. So now I'm here on the inside and I'm going to line this up and pin this into place. On the outside, because I'm gonna be doing my sewing on the outside. So my seam allowances are inside the cuff, inside the cuff, and sewing from the outside of the pant, so and I can pre-press this, but again, I always find I get into trouble when I pre-press things because the press ends up being in not the spot where I need it to be. And then I'm like going back in and kind of cleaning it up. So I like to sew in the tube. So I'm gonna turn this right sides in again. I'm gonna start a discrete spot such as the under leg where, because this is where all our back tacking is gonna happen, la da la da la da. If I have a regular foot on, I'll be four buying a little bit here, um, which means my foot will be up on the piping. Uh, so I might wanna keep my zipper foot on. And now when I sew, I'm going to feel the cuff underneath and make sure that my cuff is covering up the seam, that I'm gonna catch it. So I'm sewing about an eighth of an inch away. And I need to check back and see, ooh, I barely caught it there. Nice though, huh? I wanna make sure that it's up against the seam. If I see a little bubble coming, I wanna stretch the fabric and encourage that bubble. Another thing I can do is lift the presser foot up and push the fabric back, but only if my needle's in. So this machine has a great thing where I can set it so that every time I stop sewing, either the needle's in or the needle's out. A lot of the new computerized sewing machines have that option as well. And it's really, really handy when you're doing sewing to have it so that it stops with the needle in so that you don't have to lose, so you don't, you're less likely to lose your place um, uh, if you're doing any kind of uh, adjustment to your fabric or whatever. So that's another pitch for a computerized sewing machine. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of a good old manual sewing machine and you would think that this machine was manual too, but I, all these other machines we have here, manual, industrials, this is the only one that has the computer attached to it and this is the one I gravitate towards. How about you, Dustry? Is this your fave? Yeah. yeah. And to get this computer attached, I, I actually can't get a, a computer attached to the end of every all the other machines because they don't have this infrastructure in place for it. But it'd be like multiple thousands of dollars. But if you ever are out to buy an industrial sewing machine, if you can get one with the computer on it, um, it's such a joy. You know, it's such a joy. All right. So some parts on the cuff, it's a little bit deeper, and some parts it barely caught. Whoa, some parts it didn't catch at all. I'll have to go back over that. And that is the hazard of not pressing or pinning beforehand. But on the outside, how cute. Dun, 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 dun. The cuff just needs to be pressed. So I'm going to stop this right now, right here, because um, I uh, don't have the right elastic and it's been an hour and a half, but you can get done with what I've given you here and I will take a cute picture of it completed, but I just need to do the other leg, right? So good luck with these shorts and call or text or email. In fact, I might just start a little page um, on Facebook where you guys can talk to each other about the things you're running into and stuff like that. I mean, I'm motivated to do that, but I'm not 100% sure I will do that, but I'm going to try. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys on Thursday.